Good afternoon and welcome to Go To Kitchens. My name is Leslie and I am here with David and Michael and they challenged me, dang it, with a, um, with a recipe for spring rolls and they wanted to have something new in their recipe repertoire that wasn't, uh, and we have Rusty down here too, you can hear his collar, um, and they wanted something that was quick and easy and healthy and so I kind of remade a spring roll recipe that they found and we're gonna make that for you today. So it's gonna be spring rolls and we're gonna do a cashew butter, um, a cashew butter, what's it called? Cashew sauce. butter sauce. Thank you. I couldn't get it out there. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about the ingredients. Everybody say hi, David. Hello. And Michael. Hi. All right. They're going to be shy for like the first minute and a half and then they'll be crazy. So get ready. Um, so we're going to use shrimp in our spring rolls. Uh, we're going to use a little bit of grated ginger. I'm going to use some purple cabbage. Um, we're also going to use a brown rice, uh, I think you say it, verm vermicelli, is that right? Verm vermicelli? I can't, I don't know how to say it. Vermicelli? Yeah, vermicelli. It's brown rice noodles. <laughs> so they also make white rice noodles. I just prefer the brown rice. We're going to use some mint in the spring rolls, basil. I have an, actually, ironically, I have an Italian blend of microgreens. And we have the traditional rice paper that you use. But I will tell you that we're also gonna go with the turnip greens because you can see they're really flexible and try to make some with the turnip greens as well. And if they're yummy, then that would be an awesome way to replace the rice papers. But we're gonna do them traditionally and with the turnip greens uh, as well. We have some cilantro um, and I think, the, and the carrot and a little bit of lemon that actually goes in the sauce. So. So those are the things that are gonna go in the spring rolls. And then in the sauce, we're gonna have cashew butter, lemon, apple cider vinegar, uh, honey, and cayenne pepper, and some soy sauce. All right. Okay, so we're back here at the stove and I am going to put the noodles. This, is, uh, this was an eight ounce package of noodles. And I am gonna, I've used about a third of it um, out of that eight ounces. So I'm gonna just go ahead and drop those down in the water and they are going to cook for just about three minutes. They're kind of messy. Get those down in there. Maybe just turn up the heat just a little bit. All right, so those are gonna boil down in that water and we'll come back to those in just a second. But what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about, um, uh, Michael, tell us why you like shrimp. You oh. like. Part of that's probably because I grew up on the Gulf Coast of Texas, so ah. we always had shrimp, um, and my grandmother was Cajun, so okay. we, had, we had gumbo, we had jambalaya, we just had regular shrimp, and shrimp was always something that was around in my house when I was a kid. David, you like shrimp too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. David grew up in the Caribbean um, on the island of St. Croix, so I'm sure that that was a big part of your life as well, is all fresh seafood, so... Um, so these are already, I bought these at the market. Um, they are already cooked and ready to be eaten. You could cook your and clean your own shrimp. I actually just cut the tails off and then they're in half. You can see here, they're really thin. They're just gonna be in half and that's gonna be the easiest for a spring roll. So let's talk just quickly about shrimp. When you're buying shrimp, it's best to, you can buy farm raised, which is a little contrary to most um, uh, fish you want to buy wild caught but shrimp you can actually buy farm raised but it should be from North America at the very least and then it should also be um, you should also think about it being from the Pacific Northwest is where you're going to get the freshest cleanest and healthiest shrimp so you want the the product that you're eating the animal that you're consuming should be healthy and this these are healthy shrimp so and they are North American Pacific Northwest so um, so then we have a little bit of cabbage that's going to go down in there and the cabbage you just want to just give it a coarse cut just so that it fits in the spring rolls really easily. I know the camera's jumping around, I apologize for that. But see how we get little like noodle kind of consistency? That's exactly what you want for spring rolls and it looks really, really pretty too. So if you're making these for appetizers, you guys, I mean when you have friends or family over and you want to make these are great appetizers because you can just pick them up and just eat them without needing a fork or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, then these are the 
what it looks like is really important. It needs to look appetizing. So this raw cabbage like that and the purple is great. We have a little bit of carrot that we've shredded here. You can run this through a mandolin. Um, I've just used what's available here and which is a peeler. And they were, Michael and David were a little shocked, both of them, that when I peel my carrots that I don't throw the skin away uh, from the carrot. I actually eat that. And so if you're eating an organic carrot and you, you know, if you watch Go To Kitchens a lot, you know that all of my fresh fruits and vegetables are organic. So if you're eating, you should only be eating an organic carrot. And if you are, it's perfectly fine to eat the skin because there's no pesticides or contaminants on it. So see again how these are long like the cabbages. So when they're in the spring roll and they're laying together side by side, uh, they're gonna look really, really pretty. So I've chopped up a little bit of cilantro here. What do you think that is? About two tablespoons maybe? Maybe a little more, maybe three tablespoons? A little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> David's been eating the carrots. <laughs> um, I have uh, some mint, some fresh chopped up mint. When you're chopping herbs, you just wanna go real careful with them. You wanna, and these are all organic, of course, you wanna make sure that you don't chop them too finely because then you end up bruising the herbs and you leave all of your flavor and your smell on the cutting board as, as opposed to the herb. So, and then over here, I have about two tablespoons of basil and Michael loves basil. We were talking actually, was it David? Mm -hmm. Oh. One of you said that you loved basil. One of you loves cilantro, one of you loves basil. I love cilantro. Okay, they both love cilantro. <laughs> David's been smelling this cilantro-like flowers. He's like, oh, it smells so good. There's no such thing as too much cilantro. <laughs> and then in here, we just have some little baby microgreens. And this is just gonna give a little bit more of the crunch and also going to give a, instead of sprouts, like bean sprouts, uh, this is what I would use uh, for that. That's like kale and spinach and broccoli. Uh, microgreens. So it's just little tiny little harvested greens right from the plant. Um, so, so now we have all of our ingredients ready. We're going to start on the, um, on the rice paper. They're doing sign language. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so Leslie, I have a question about microgreens. Yeah, yeah. So I have been to King Supers before uh -huh. a couple of times and mm -hmm. asked them for bean sprouts. Mm -hmm. And they always say they don't have bean sprouts. And what they always say, and I don't know that I believe them, is that they just don't have a good um, they don't have a good source for them, so they, they direct people to the microgreens. Yeah. I thought I had heard something uh, several years ago maybe about health concerns with bean sprouts because of bacteria. Salmonella and E. coli. Yeah. yeah. Have you done anything Listeria. About that? Yeah. So uh, bean sprouts have a bad rap for that. And unless you're getting, unless you can get them from a source that is local that you know the person or the farm that you're buying them from, you should be very careful with bean sprouts. And the problem is, is that the way that they have to clean them once they've been taken out, um, they, they have to, it's, there's a lot of cross contamination that can happen and they will also spoil. It's kind of like spinach. Spinach will spoil very easily. And when it does, it can get an E. coli bacteria on it. So you want to just be a little careful. And I think it's also, they probably, they probably, I want to say cook them, but they probably grow them in a lot of manure. Yeah, I can see the noodles over there boiling. David's sign languaging. Noodles, noodles, don't forget the noodles. You can <laughs> stir them actually, David. Give them a quick stir. I'll come over there and have a look. So I figured that was the case with the bean sprouts. Yeah, yeah, they they get a bad rap too. But if you can find them local, they're really easy to grow too. I mean, if you wanted to just put them in a pot, you would have bean sprouts in no time. So. Mm. All right, I think those are ready because you want you want these. That was like two minutes on these, and you want these to be al dente. You do not want them to be in um, in super. We've never cooked with three in the kitchen before. This is interesting, um, but you want them to be. You don't want them to be super um, mushy. They get mushy very fast because they're so thin. So what I'm doing now is just running ouch cold water over them. Just be a little careful. Make sure all your hot water's out before you stick your hand down in there. Don't do like me. Now the cold water will help set the starch in the noodles and keep them from sticking together. So here we've started an assembly line and Looks like we're working really fast here, and that's because I've sped up the video. This was uh, this was kind of getting long, so I wanted to speed it up for you. And David's just putting all the ingredients down into his spring roll, and he's using a rice paper. He's already soaked his rice paper, and he's adding the uh, brown rice noodles now. 
We're going to watch him roll it up here. You can see it's kind of sticking to that cutting board. It's not a great surface for it. We tried parchment paper as well, and I wouldn't recommend that. Maybe uh, wax paper, or just if you have granite countertops, that would probably just be the best just to roll them up right there on your countertops. If you have any tips and tricks about how to do that, uh, please go to our Facebook page and, and tell us about how, to, how you do roll up spring rolls. So I'm just going to cut them in half here. You can see there's a nice beautiful color down in there. And then Michael's going to come around. Actually, first I'm going to grate some ginger down in the water. This is just going to give it a nice fragrant smell as you're using it. And then also flavor slightly the rice paper. It's going to soak up that ginger a little bit. You can use as much as you want. You could use an essential oil down there as well, some sort of citrus or uh, even lavender would be kind of yummy. So when you're working with rice paper, keep in mind it's very sticky. So you kind of want to dredge it. Um, and you want it to come out of the water right before it's limp. So here goes the shrimp. Almost make you dizzy in fast speed. Hilarious. And this, the uh, microgreens, carrots, all the celery, parsley, basil. Now the noodles. Michael goes downtown on the noodles here. He likes the noodles. You're going to see him roll it up here. Now I'm going to cut it so you can see how beautiful it is inside. Now I'm going to grab a turnip green. So you want a nice big one, nice flat one. You're going to soak it down in the hot water so that it is uh, wilts a little bit. Just keep it down in there. You can see me holding it down there. Remember, this is sped up, so you want to do it until you have a nice wilted turnip green so that it's pliable so that when you make the roll. I'm going to work really fast here because this is what I do for a living, and I was teaching these guys how to make them. Actually, it's my first time to make them too, so... Um, so we're just kind of experimenting together. I modified this recipe for them so that it was a little more healthy. Added some more vegetables to it. And of course the turnip greens. Now you can watch how easily this stuff rolls. The stem's going to break a little bit. And then you're just going to keep on, uh, keep on rolling around there. And cut it in half and you have this gorgeous spring roll. Okay, so we're gonna make the cashew butter sauce and um, I'm gonna let Michael, David's gonna call up the ingredients and Michael's gonna stir it up in the kitchen for us. So. Okay. So one third cup of hot water, which you got in there. Okay. Yep. Two thirds cup of cashew butter. All right. I'll let you do that. Okay. It's pretty stiff, so you're gonna have to dig it out of there. Here. Get in there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's live TV. <laughs> Nothing ever cooperates. Hmm. Wow, it does smell good. I think that's close enough for... <laughs> <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Actually, oh, am I going to use that spoon? Yeah. Okay. All right. What's next? Um, one third cup of soy sauce. Mm, love soy sauce. I'm your lovely assistant. That's a lot of soy sauce. Thank you. By the way, if you're concerned about sodium, you can use a low sodium soy sauce or you can use, uh, there's actually a product called Coconut Aminos and it's going to be a lot sweeter than soy sauce, but it's going to have a lot less sodium and it's actually a fermented product, so it's pretty good for you. It's expensive. A bottle like this is going to cost you about $25, so I'm just going to go with the soy sauce. As you know, in go-to kitchens, I always talk about moderation is key and you're not drinking soy sauce every day so you know just you know have at it use half the soy sauce if you want half the amount if you're concerned two tablespoons of lemon juice that's about what's in that right there oh so I don't need to I've measure. already squeezed the lemon juice so yeah you can just throw that down in there okay right, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper I should have had that off there already I always have to think Let about the, teaspoon versus tablespoon. 
Do you? Yeah. Yeah, I think it confuses. I mean, how many times have I made a, a recipe that I've put tablespoon instead of teaspoon or vice versa? So cayenne pepper, oh, go ahead, David. We'll go to the next ingredient. Oh, half a cup of honey raw. Oh. So the recipe for this sauce actually called for corn syrup. And because I don't eat corn syrup, <laughs> um, I decided to do a raw honey. If I were making this for myself personally, I would probably, oh, it's that we should have measured that out. Nice slow process. Um, I probably would use about half of this amount. I wouldn't use this much sugar, but Again, you have to think that you're making this, you're not gonna eat this whole bowl of this. You're gonna eat, um, you're just gonna eat part of this bowl. You're just gonna use it as a dipping sauce. So so don't be too concerned or freaked out. Do you know how many servings this is actually gonna end up This being? sauce, I would say a lot. I mean, there's a that's a lot of ingredient in there. <laughs> there so there is, yes. you think you just dip it in there. Um, my honey is kind of stiff. It's been in the cabinet and I should have set it in the sun last night or last night. I should have set it in the sun last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, that's the funny thing about Colorado. It's sunny all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know what? Close enough. That's, oh, we're about to get a big chunk. That's, no? okay. all right. that's close enough. I'm gonna have to use that spoon, I'm afraid. So, um, so I used honey instead of the corn syrup. Again, raw honey is actually really, really good for you. If you have allergies, you should try to find local honey. Uh, local honey for your area, um, this is Colorado wildflower honey. It, because the bees pollinate with the local flowers and that's typically what's giving you the allergy is the local, local floral and fauna. Um, you, eat the, um, you eat the honey and it actually helps with, um, with your allergies. So, I mean, you can't eat like a ton of honey, but some of it's really good for you, so. What are we looking at next? Half a cup of apple cider vinegar. Half a cup, okay, same half cup. That is a lot. So the, the, the regular um, recipe called for sherry, I decided to go with apple cider vinegar because it is uh, much better for you and it's going to give it quite a, a tang. So you're just going to have to stir that up really good in there. I'm sure it could be much more fun. It could be. <laughs> no sipping the sherry. Wow. It's uh, not going to cream up like the other, uh, like peanut butter would, but. Once that dissolves in there, it's gonna be like a super yummy. Isn't it beautiful? It's so lovely. Um, so we have, whoops, chopsticks everywhere. Ah, when chopsticks attack. Panic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have a little bit of the cashew butter sauce here. Um, we have the spring rolls in the turnip greens, the spring rolls in the rice wraps, and I just garnished the plate with some <coughs> pretty little microgreens there and in the in the sauce too so so i think uh, i'm going to take a bite you guys going to take a bite yeah mm -hmm. i'm going to go with the turnip green here so you guys i'm just going to dip it right down in there and go to town oh how's it with the turnip greens really good really mm-hmm i'm gonna try one mm. it has a really grassy kind of fresh flavor to it that's a little unusual but mm. really good how are they these are better than the ones at young's do you like the sauce the sauce is good it's yeah. good isn't it it's Ooh. pretty spicy yeah like like give it said before it sneaks up on you yeah Come on. yeah try that it's really good i'm mm. gonna have one more bite you can see there how lovely it is and drippy Mmm. That's very good. Can I have a bite of the turnip green one? All right, we're gonna finish chowing down here and <laughs> make some more because we have tons of ingredients to make more. Do you wanna say something, David? I like the turnip green better. Ooh. They're good, it's right? Paper. I better, I better mm -hmm. try the turnip green before mm -hmm. we go. The turnip green is really good, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it has a really good dimension and flavor. Do you like them? Michael? Oh, you can eat. I do, but I prefer the rice paper. 
it's just a preference thing. So rice paper or turnip green, it would be beautiful if you made a whole plate of them of different kinds so people could choose which ones they wanted. So, so I have been here with David and Michael. They have graciously opened their kitchen to us. We made a new recipe for them to add to their uh, repertoire for the week. And we remade it a little bit and made it more healthy and super yummy. Super healthy with the turnip green, by the way. Um, and I am Leslie, and this is Go To Kitchens. And thank you so much for watching. I will tell you that these episodes are not possible without you guys. Please, if you make a spring roll, a summer spring roll, get on Facebook, send us a picture. You can even send me a video clip. I would love to put it on our Facebook page. And look for our website coming soon, go to kitchens.com. You can communicate with us there. You can find us on Pinterest and Twitter and all those massive social media sites. So thank you so much. You guys have a great day. And this is Go To Kitchens. Thanks for watching again. Ask me, chat with me, hang out with me, learn with me, pen me, go to kitchens.com.